Welcome to Electron Online. Sometimes, actually quite often, students have trouble distinguishing between permutations and combinations. They're not always sure which one they're looking for if it's not explicitly stated in the problem. So let's read our problem here. It tells us to choose any five students from a class of 30. Now they tell us up there order does not matter and here the same thing and order matters. So there they make it very very clear, very plain that on the first attempt here since order doesn't matter we're looking for permutations and here we're looking for oh, oh I'm sorry order doesn't matter I'm going to get everybody confused now so in this case we're looking for combinations because order doesn't matter and if order matters then we're looking for permutations. Now what if they didn't explicitly tell us that order doesn't matter? Then we have to kind of think about it and go we're picking five students out of a class of 30. Do they really care what the order of the students is? We just care about which of the five students we end up with. Which five out of the 30 we end up with. So if they don't specify order doesn't matter I would say um, or order matters either one if they don't specify that detail I would lean towards the first one that order really doesn't matter you're simply interested in which five students out of 30 you pick so sometimes you kind of have to think about it or sometimes it's explicitly stated so let's calculate either one if order doesn't matter we're looking for the number of combinations so the equation for combinations if there's n to choose from and R are picked. So in this case, that's going to be the number of combinations. There's 30 students and five are picked. And so the equation we use for that is, um, in this case would be N factorial divided by N minus R factorial times one over R factorial. This is what sets the difference between combinations and permutations. Without this, you'd have the number of permutations. With it, you have the number of combinations. So in this case, that's going to be equal to 30 factorial divided by 30 minus 5 factorial times 1 over 5 factorial. So in this case, that would be the same as 30 factorial divided by 25 factorial times 1 over 5 factorial. And this then turns into 30 times 29 times 28 times 27 times 26. Anything 25 and under cancels out, divided by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so this is going to be, let's see here, 30 times 29 times 28 times 27 times 26. That would be 17 million. So 17 million, 100 thousand seven hundred and twenty divided by five factorial which is 120 so divide this by 120 and we get 142,506 possible combinations so that's the total number of ways in which you can pull five students out of a class of 30 that's actually a really big number especially when the order doesn't matter now, if we're looking for permutations, when the order does matter, then we can say that the number of permutations, when we have n students to choose from, and we pick r number of students, so in this case that would be n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. We don't have the 1 over r factorial because we're looking for permutations. So this is equal to 30 factorial divided by 30 minus 5 factorial or 30 factorial divided by 25 factorial. Notice that the same as the first part over there. So this would become 30 times 29 times 28 times 27 times 26. And that then becomes 17,100,720 different kind of permutations. So if the order does matter, you have 120 times as many possibilities of pulling five students out of a classroom because for each five students there's 
120 different ways you can do it if the order matters and that's why it's such a much bigger number but you can again see the difference between the two and if nothing was specified I would go for combinations because typically when you pull five people out of a group you don't care how the five people are picked what the order is you simply care about which five you end up with at the end so I would lean towards this being a problem where we're looking for the number of combinations rather than the number of permutations and that is how it's done would you agree? <laughs> when I go this class, I always thought combination. You say, like when I, whenever you follow a recipe, it's just to combine the ingredients. You never care about which one goes first. So I combine the dry ingredients. They never said, well, I'll put the flour in first, and then the sugar, and then the salt. You just throw it in together and mix it. That's a good way. So like a cookbook. Yeah. Combination is you combine things, and you don't care what order you put it well, in. Usually they don't yeah, sometimes there is a particular order, but yeah. yeah. So the dry ingredients you combine together. Yep, just mix them up. Combination, combine. That's probably where the word came from. <laughs> I seriously doubt the benefit. <laughs> some do. Some are good cooks. <laughs>